Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. I am dazzled by the brightness outside <laughs> this morning. It's a super bright and humid day. I've got, hopefully, a very fun day planned. I started off with just loads of admin this morning on my laptop and doing a little bit of watering in the garden, my usual savoury omelette, which was deli- mm. oh, Do you know what? Actually, it wasn't my best. I was on automatic mode gonna just tell you it was delicious. It wasn't the best, I think. I think we need to turn the agar back on <laughs> because I like it when they're a little bit cooked on top and I'm not very good at flipping things and it just kind of turned into a scrambled egg which is why I didn't show you the end result but I mean whatever whatever it's still tasty just not my finest work so um today I didn't realize this dress has pockets that's a bonus my mission today is a very floral themed mission I am going to be heading to a place called the chippy flower farm this is a really big risk um, because I've not been there before, but I'm really hoping that I might be able to get a significant portion of our wedding flowers from the Chippy Flower Farm. It's not too far from Nicholson's, which is where we've got a meeting at two o'clock, so it's convenient for me to dash there this morning. I, It's really important to me that nearly everything from our wedding is sourced locally. We are sourcing, we have got so many British brands that we are championing and um, featuring and using <laughs> at the wedding. It's really important to us and so I thought wouldn't it be amazing if I can actually get the flowers locally. The original plan was obviously Covent Garden Flower Market, that's where our florist would typically go and pick up the blooms, but I just thought it would be absolutely amazing if we can source the blooms even more locally, literally from within 10 miles of where we live so I think if I go today I'll be able to ask them about what will be in bloom in a couple of weeks time for our wedding and see what kind of orders we can place. I've seen from their Instagram they've got some gorgeous delphiniums, foxgloves, alliums will be over by then um, but yes I think it should be a really fun little trip. Then we're heading to Nicholson's. As you may know, we have worked with Nicholson's a lot here at the house. We have spent a lot of money with them. <laughs> they have basically re-landscaped pretty much our entire garden. And as a thank you, I guess, for being great customers, they have very kindly said that we can actually borrow lots of potted plants and trees and shrubs for our wedding day which is great because it means more florals and yet more sustainable because it means slightly less on the cut flowers, more on the things which are going to keep on living. And also we might be able to give some of them to our guests. Some of our guests have shown an interest in sponsoring a tree um, that will be part of the church ceremony, spoiler alert. But yes, yeah, so we're basically going to go to Nicholson's and choose some of the trees and shrubs and bushes <laughs> for the wedding. So a very floral morning. So I'm wearing a floral dress, kind of. It's like a geographic floral dress. I feel a little bit overdressed, but I'll probably end up popping a cardigan on over my shoulders because it's not the warmest of mornings. This is a lovely new number from Abercrombie. I was actually wearing it the other day with these straps. Hang on, I'll try not to flash you. Uh, tucked in because when I'm out in the garden, I love to be strapless so that I don't get any tan lines because, spoiler alert, they would be visible on the wedding day if I had tan lines. So, um, yeah, love love a smocked bodice. I did place an Avacombi order, which I'm going to share with you when I get back from my floral, um, floral missions. Oops, I've got the straps all twisted. I have some really beautiful summer dresses, but this one I thought would be perfect for today. I really like the material of these because even though I'm probably going to be, you know, doing a bit of gardening later, this kind of thing can just go in the wash super easily and this pattern is very forgiving. Today is the day after I had um, my treatments at Bamford, so I've got quite a lot of oil <laughs> still in my hair and I also had my lashes lifted and my brows laminated and tinted yesterday, so I feel like um, I'm not, I don't know, I don't fully feel that put together with the oil slicked hair and the very bold brows, but never mind, without further ado, let's hit the road and go and check out the flower farm. I 
arrived at the Chippy Flower Farm. It's super breezy, so hopefully you can still hear me. But basically, there's a lovely little shop as you come in, um, and then you can just kind of have a little wander around the gardens. Everything here is still to come. I've picked a lane where <laughs> everything's a little bit smaller, but it's lovely to get an idea of what they've got here. Lots of bits, um, which will probably be flowering, I would say, in July, August time. Let's see, there's some beautiful shrubbery over here. Some cornflower. I think that's cornflower. Some viburnum over here looking gorgeous and lots of napita catmint as well. Their viburnum's going a bit brown too, like mine. I don't know whether I should trim the heads off. You can also just get pre-made up bunches in the shop, which is really lovely. Some beautiful poppies in here and some lovely um, Queen Anne's lace, a few delphiniums. So pretty. And this lovely Ami Majors, which is so structural. It's really nice mix between a bloom and a foliage. So pretty. Some pretty purpley blooms in here. And then some lovely gladioli. That's absolutely gorgeous definitely want to pick some of this and by the looks of it it's coming into bud might still be in bloom by the wedding if I'm lucky I thought ranunculus were all finished and yet they've got some which are just coming into bloom here so I might be in luck how beautiful these peachy pink tones gosh look at this an entire wall of sweet pea that is so beautiful I imagine they'll be coming into flower over the next week or so Beautiful, if only I had a um, cold frame big enough to grow my sweet peas in. Gosh, how lovely. They've got an entire lawn area here full of foxgloves, or digitalis, I can never tell the difference, which I think will be absolutely perfect. And timing-wise, if you can see there's quite a few little ones coming up, we should be in luck. So I'm definitely going to pop in a request for a few of these. Such beautiful colours, green and white, with little hints of purple inside the flowers. Well, I'd say that was a great success. It's a really gorgeous little farm here, quite um, rustic and natural as opposed to like a pristine flower market, completely different experience. We're actually only five minutes away from Soho Farmhouse here and 10 minutes from Chipping Norton. So definitely worth popping in. It's all, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if, um, sorry, that's just gonna have to do for now. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Soho Farmhouse actually come here to get the flowers for the restaurants and the um, rooms, etc. I'm really struggling with the camera today because the gravel is so wonky. But I have got an hour until our meeting at Nicholson's and it's only 10 minutes away. 10 minutes in the other direction is Station Mill Antiques and there are still some bits I need to get for the wedding. Apologies, I am literally on repeat these last few vlogs. I feel like I just do the same thing every day. Make some breakfast to do a workout um source antiques and talk about the wedding but speaking of talking about the wedding i asked on instagram i popped a little q a box up yesterday and there have been so many questions so i think once we get home i'm going to do a little wedding q a fill you in on lots of the info that you guys have been asking so yeah that's the plan next stop antique shop <laughs> and here we are my next stop of the day Let's see how many goodies I find at our favourites. This is actually amazing. It's really rare to find antique um, terracotta rhubarb forces with the lids still intact. I've got a feeling Charlie's going to want me to pick these up. And look! My gosh, they've got so many nice garden antiques here. That is gorgeous.
little bit rogue, but I feel like it could be so fun to have our wedding cake <laughs> displayed on something like this. <sighs> Maybe I've gone a bit mad, but I just love it. So rustic. I'm gonna have to show Charlie some photos, but there is so much in here that I wanna get. So many urns. I mean, look at this lovely flower display cage. Beautiful. staging in the marquees and at the church. I think we are going to be spoiled for choice as everything comes into bloom. So this is a hydrangea Annabelle that we absolutely love. Hopefully they might be flowering on time for our wedding. We've got a few weeks to go, so they might just come out in time. And it'd be lovely to borrow a few of these to have outside the church. I'm a little bit sad that this is in flower at the moment. <laughs> That's Charlie getting excited over salvia. Um, yeah, because it smells incredible. It smells almost like a jasmine. It is a Philadelphia snowbell. Um, <laughs> sorry. But sadly, the flowers will all be gone by our wedding day. again now I will show you my haul in a little bit my antique and um, Nicholson's haul but before we lose the sunlight which is not gonna happen for a good few hours but I know that once I get into the garden there'll be no dragging me out <laughs> um, I'm gonna share with you the pieces that were in my Abercrombie and Fitch order this week my latest order as you'll have seen I've been wearing this gorgeous dress all day I think this is going to be one that I wear so much this summer I love a smocked bodice and I love that I can just pull the sleeves down get the sun on my decollet area and lengthwise very elegant as well let's move you over here lovely you're actually on a tripod today. I apologise about my hair. Um, I think I mentioned earlier it's still got some oil in it from the treatment yesterday. Tilt you down a little bit. So there you can see the length of the dress. It is a really beautiful mid axi length, just above the ankles. Very elegant, very easy to wear. The actual fabric is quite casual, I would say, which means that I can wear it for lots of different occasions today. Just tootling around different garden centres, absolutely perfect. But then if I had do you know what, I would even wear this as a wedding guest outfit. Um, just a very easy to wear piece, easy to care for as well. In the washing machine, it can just be flung in. Very, very easy <laughs> being the operative word for this dress. And I love the little ruffle details on the sleeve. So yes, this is what I've been wearing all day. Now let me share with you some beautiful white dresses, which again, I'm gonna be wearing all summer long. Okay, are you ready for a very cliche, Josie white dress, <laughs> white summer dress haul? Because that is what we've got. Three amazing white summer dresses from Abercrombie. They have got the silhouettes so spot on. They are elegant, they are timeless, they are just so easy to wear. I find white dresses as well really easy to style. You guys know my go-to rattan or raffia accessories, it's no surprise. Um, but equally I feel like you can dress up or down a lovely elegant white dress. This one has got a really fun detail at the back. It's got a little bow tie detail. I'm not wearing a bra with this. Um, 
I reckon you could quite cleverly hide bra straps, I wouldn't let that bother you. Little pockets and then a beautiful pleated bottom layer to the dress which is so pretty. It is also incredibly comfortable. This is an elasticated section here, elasticated around the bust and then this very pretty ruffle detail up at the top there which I think is just absolutely gorgeous. So this is dress number one, summer garden parties, special events, just wanting to look and feel fabulous <laughs> when you are going to the beach, meeting friends for a glass of wine after work. I love it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and really nice lightweight material as well, which is going to keep you nice and cool during those hopefully warm days which are coming. Oh my gosh, I am in love with this little dress. This is just the most comfortable, easy to throw on dress in the entire world. If any of you guys live in a country where it is warm most of the time and you just need those things in your wardrobe that you can fling on and just feel fabulous straight away, this is one of them. It's got a really big elasticated detail at the back, just makes it so comfortable. A little dipped back and then this really stunning, very classic pleated material. It's a little bit bridal if I do say so myself. I love a good pleated fabric and then it's just so lightweight and breezy. I always say if you are looking for something to keep you cool during a heat wave, just look for something which is made of lovely natural fabrics and something which is not clinging too tight to the body. So this just ticks all the boxes. Again, we've got pockets. Love that they always do pockets. I mean, with <laughs> unsurprising accessory choice, I think this is just heat wave day perfection. Let's manifest a heat wave. I'm ready for some sunshine and some heat to finally join us this year. Okay, my darlings, your eyes do not deceive you. This is a different dress. This one I think actually might be my favorite. There is something a lot more formal about this one. I think because of the structure of the fabric, it's a really beautiful lightweight fabric. And again, I'm just loving Abercrombie's use of pleating at the moment. I think a pleated bodice. Oh my gosh! No, I can't say that. That's a spoiler. Ha! <laughs> um, but yes, I'm loving a pleated bodice. How elegant does that look? I think it's so pretty. This one, more than the other two, I think is suitable for slightly smarter occasions. It's summer, you know, garden parties, Wimbledon, Henley, just sporting events in general where you want to dress up. This is a perfect Wimbledon outfit. Once again, Oh my god, I love this dress so much. I'm going to wear this tomorrow. I'm going to wear this all weekend. I can't wait. Um, yes, I think it's just gorgeous. I am also very grateful for this little smocking section at the back. That is giving it its gorgeous shape. Very elegant midi length, can you see? And I've actually popped on these very old little raffia sandals from Oasis. I think I need to have a clear out because let's be honest, all I really wear these days are my Aquazura heels, which apparently one of you guys let me know that you can actually get them in Vista Village right now, so I might go and get another pair. But yeah, this is Josie going to Wimbledon, going to watch the tennis or have a fabulous day at Dale's Spittle, so her farmhouse. Basically, a gorgeous dress at a gorgeous price, and I love it. So, oh, do you know what you could do? Because sometimes it does get a little bit chilly, especially if you're going to be out all day. This is one of my favorite ever Abercrombie and Fitch purchases. It's the pleated kind of crinkly blouse or shirt that I first showed you when I was in Oman. That was fabulous. Um, I'd definitely go back to Oman. It's such a great place, like guaranteed sunshine, amazing service, amazing weather, amazing food. But yeah, sometimes in the evenings you just want a little something over your shoulders. And if you want to stick with an all white outfit, the versatility of a plain white shirt is fabulous. Say you're going on a holiday and you just want a little something if you're on the airplane or someone insists on putting the aircon on, then just throwing a shirt over your shoulders is such a great look. I did actually also order <laughs> a cable knit jumper in this Abercrombie & Fitch order, but I don't know if I can bring myself to put it on because I'd say it's about 21 degrees outside, which in the UK is hot. Well, it's warm. Um, and our garden, I swear, is a microclimate because the area that we sit outside the kitchen, it always feels... <laughs> I would not even be exaggerating to say it feels like it's 10 degrees warmer. Anyway, I'll show you the knit. 
I mean, it is actually quite awesome and I think Freddie would like this. It is a slightly zip up, chunky knit jumper. I think I'm just gonna have to ask you guys to use your imagination because I really can't bring myself to put this on now. Maybe what I'll do is I'll find a picture of the model wearing this and pop it on the screen. But I can even see myself wearing this over my yoga gear when it gets chilly or even just chilly mornings, like chilly late spring mornings, um, getting to my Pilates class. I love things like this. Not for June, but I just know that if I don't buy this now, it will sell out for summer. So there we go. Right, I'm going to pop on my green dress again and I'm gonna do a little bit of gardening. <laughs> what a surprise. Holy macaroni, look at what we have just had delivered. Oh my goodness, the most epic bunch of peonies from my wonderful friends at Flowered. This really has turned out to be a very <laughs> floral themed vlog and I'm just about to go outside and do some flower arranging, spoiler alert. But oh my goodness, these are quite literally the most beautiful peonies I've ever seen. It is a gorgeous collection of cream and then these like pinky green going into white peonies. I don't think I've ever seen such gorgeous colors. And look how they're coming out so beautifully. There's some which is still tightly bound, so I've still got a week or so of joy. Doesn't that just look like a giant pillow of peonies? Peony season is short but sweet, so make the most of it. I will leave the flowered peony page linked down below. But my goodness, will they still be in bloom for my wedding? Unlikely, but a girl can dream. A girl can dream, and peonies just smell so heavenly, don't they? Just a very delicate floral scent. I'm in love, I'm in love. Thank you, Flowered. Gosh, what a glorious evening in the greenhouse. Um, so, this is my recent antique shop haul, most of it. Lots of plant pots, which means I'm gonna be very busy over the next couple of weekends potting things up. My dream is to have tables with um, potted plants and herbs and flowers next to the food, next to the order of services. Just, I want our wedding to be a representation of us. And I think that terracotta pots with lovely things in is, um, just the ticket. So this half is mostly what I picked up from Station Mill today and then some of the bits that I picked up at the barn at Stratford yesterday which you might have caught in the last vlog. So I think next week I will probably, or maybe this weekend, see what little plants they've got at Dalesford because actually I think these are starting to go over a little bit. Not sure that they will stand a chance of still being in flower for the wedding. I might do some like mixture pots with some peas in. Um, as long as I keep deadheading my, what do you might call it, they should stay good in time for the wedding. We've got some basil, we've got lots of tomatoes, need to get rid of the yellow looking leaves. Need to start eating my little cucumbers and my chilies. Look how fantastic these are. Definitely need to plan some chili recipes. Um, this tomato plant is doing exceptionally well. Obviously need to keep a good amount of bits here in the greenhouse. Dexy, you're such a good helper, I'm so grateful. Um, but equally want to make sure that we've got enough potted bits for the tables. And even like in the bathrooms, you know, I just wanna have flowers and foliage everywhere. I also picked up Chick-fil-A. This for just having on, again, the food table. It might have some salads in it or something. And we might even do the seating plan on this old chopping board. Tee hee. Well, excuse the aeroplane noise, but my goodness, the cut flower garden is looking amazing. <gasps> Speaking of peonies, here are my own homegrown. You have flowered prematurely, my friends. I wanted you to be in bloom for the wedding. If you could just stay exactly as you are for a couple of weeks, that would be sensational. I'm gonna come down and pick some of these dahlias because the more you pick them, the more they come back. They've literally tripled in quantity since I was last down here and there's loads left to come. And Speaking of dahlias, here are the ones that I grew from tubers that I got from the Dahlia Beach company that I told you about, gosh, months ago now. Um, I am gonna position them now in the flower beds. These are my autumnal colored ones. So we've got oranges, we've got deep pinks, we've got burgundies and a few whites because I remember 
when it came to dahlia season last year, I was kind of bored of spring summer colours and I wanted some warm tones to bring into the house. So I specifically chose autumnal coloured dahlias this time. There's a few gaps in this border here. We've just got the most, oh gosh, these peonies. Oh, how are they so amazing? How are you so amazing, my friends? I don't know. It's just nature, amazing. Speaking of amazing nature, look at this. Good day to you. You are a stunnerillo. I love how wild this corner is looking. It just looks so fabulous. I couldn't love it anymore. So while we've still got some glorious sunshine down in this corner of the garden, I'm going to lay out my dahlias in these gaps here. There's a few dahlias coming up from last year as well. I didn't uproot my tubers, so it's going to be dahlia orama down here, <laughs> which I'm very excited for. really see you because I'm being dazzled but hopefully you can see me. Is this any better? Who knows? Oh these are filthy. So I did um, go <laughs> literally like a little blind mole rat. I did mention that yesterday I put up an Instagram story with um, wedding Q&A as a little pop-up box so I thought I would just sit here in the sunshine and answer some questions while my plants soak up the watering that I've just given them. So I think the stories actually expire shortly. So I'll do this as a bit of a speed round. Haven't actually even had a look through these yet. Here we go, some little wedding um, teasers. I'll try not to hold back. Okay, so Laura Steph Maha has asked, have you chosen your wedding perfume? This is actually a bit of a giveaway, a bit of a sneak peek, but when we were in Oman, Joe Malone and I just, really connected in such an amazing way and she's the loveliest lady as I've said 10 million times she probably has the best nose on the entire planet and I feel so incredibly <laughs> honoured, blessed, grateful all the adjectives to say she's actually creating me a bespoke fragrance a one-off fragrance for the wedding day I told her where the wedding was going to be the vibe, my dress how lovely, we've got the church bells, and she is creating a bespoke fragrance for me for the wedding day, which is surreal. She doesn't do things like this. <laughs> and it's just so special, like the actual Jo Malone, <laughs> CBE, is creating my wedding fragrance, which is so special, and I'm so grateful to Jo. Brianna has asked how many guests we will have. We will have 65 guests, so quite small, which is lovely. Hair up or down? Um, I'm doing half up, half down, which is a very me style. I don't like my hair down over my face, especially when I'm eating. And yet, sometimes when I have my hair up like this, it feels a little bit 
just done. <laughs> so, best of both worlds. Shoes, sandals or peep toes. I would say, as a tip, just go with something you're very comfortable in. I'm gonna be wearing my Valentino rock studs, so closed toe, pointed toe, because they are the comfiest shoes in the entire world. What flowers will your bridal bouquet contain? Um, flowers from our garden. I think that just seems the most natural and perfect thing to do. Will there be any of the big day in vlogs or Insta? Guys, <laughs> there is gonna be so much wedding content. I am planning on sharing, basically from the week before the wedding, I'm gonna start vlogging a wedding vlog, showing the entire setup. Um, I have got wonderful Kat coming over and she's gonna film lots of behind the scenes, so there's gonna be a lot of wedding content, so stay tuned. Are you going to have the traditional something borrowed, something blue, something old, something new? Yes, I believe I've ticked all of those off. I actually haven't figured out what my something old is yet, um, but I'm asking various family members if there are any special jewellery pieces. How much of the wedding will you be showing on YouTube? A lot. <laughs> Literally, I'm not holding anything back. There will be so much. Uh, how do you feel about the wedding? Would it make changes in your life? I don't know. I feel like Charlie and I, we've been together for so long and um, obviously we've got the house, we've got the dogs, but I think there's just something really lovely I'm imagining about the feeling of being married to someone, just a little bit more kind of security, not that we don't have that right now, but also I'm just really excited to call him my husband, <laughs> which is very cute. Um, so yeah. Are you taking a vacation or you'll keep uploading <laughs> gardening and fashion videos? There will be wedding content, don't worry. Will you share the menu afterwards? I actually have already shared it in a vlog which I'll leave linked somewhere um, of the wedding trial, wedding dinner trial, and that is what we're having. But yeah, I'll show you the actual like printed menu and everything um, the week of the wedding. Uh, uh, uh. Are you going to be married in your local church <laughs> just as the bells stop ringing? Yes, I am. What is the one thing you're most excited to see besides Charlie? Do you know what, this actually changes all the time. Like the other day when I found out about some of the Kingdom Choir performing in our band. Oh, oh, my bunny rabbit <laughs> made me jump. Um, I'm excited for the party. I'm excited to see everyone. I'm excited to have, do you know what, my 30th birthday party, I don't know if we vlogged that actually, um, was just such an amazing occasion because it was all of my favourite people in one place and the wedding is going to be like that but twice the amount of people if not three times the amount of people so I think everyone's just going to be in such a good mood and it's going to be a day full of love so I'm excited for the people and the vibe um, I'm excited to see the transformation here in the garden I think it's just going to look amazing who designed your invites? Can we have a peek? I will show you the actual invites after the event. Um, obviously they've got a lot of the details on them, but I found a British company called Gable and Grain um, and they are making the invitations. They're really beautiful, I highly recommend them. Will you be fake tanning for the wedding? Well, that kind of depends. I have got a Saint-Tropez spray tan booked in a couple of days before, but if I keep spending time outside in the garden, I might not even need it. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> a few questions about will your dogs be a part of the wedding? They will, but not in like a huge way because they're just so naughty. <laughs> we will have them here for certain parts of the garden party, um, but they're not doing like ring bearing or, <laughs> or anything like that because anyone else that's got sausage dogs will know that they are the least trainable dogs in the entire world. So. It would just be a nightmare <laughs> to try and involve them officially but of course i will spend some time with my very special boys on the wedding day the part of planning you have enjoyed the most um i would probably say like the creative parts so like the flowers the tablescape um the decor that's what i have been enjoying the most what's your wedding morning schedule looking like Okay, <laughs> 7.30, I'm gonna get in the shower. Eight o'clock, I'm gonna sit in the chair ready to start hair and makeup. Um, the girls will be getting their hair and makeup done at the same time. My mum and the bridal party will be in the house. We'll all be getting ready together. I think 11.30, I'll be getting into the dress. 12 o'clock, uh, take some photos, the bridal party, and then 12.30, head to the church. Where did you get the inspo for your dress? I actually can't say this until after the wedding because 
it's very special and you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Love the fact that you're using so many local companies. Yeah, I think actually that was really important to us to keep it as local as possible from the food to the flowers to the um, like every service. Yes, we could have got like a fancier marquee for example or you know we could have had more bougie things but actually a priority to us was to support local businesses giving them business giving them awareness um i'll share all of the companies that we've used after the wedding and i think it's always nice to support local and yeah that's really important to charlie and i overall in life so especially important for us during our wedding how much of the food have you grown yourself? Actually, not, not much. I think a lot of the herbs will come from our garden, but um, it is just proving too challenging. Maybe some of the radishes, because I've got a lot of those. Maybe some of the broad beans. It depends what's in abundance during the wedding. But I did share with you that we're having a kitchen garden risotto as our starter, so hopefully a few of those ingredients will come from the garden. How many dresses will you have? I'm actually only having only having one dress for the wedding day. It is such a special dress that I just won't want to get out of it. What I am doing, however, is um, I'm going to just have something hanging up in my wardrobe for partying and dancing just in case I feel a bit restricted or uncomfortable and want to wear something sparkly to boogie in. But I'm not even going to take the tags off that second dress. I've ordered some bits from Matches and the Supporter. Um, and it'll be there as an option, but I highly doubt I will use it. Is it a traditional wedding? Um, I would say not really. We've just kind of, we've ditched a lot of traditions. We're not doing a cake cutting, we're not doing a first dance, we're not doing like the whole family portraits where everyone on the bride's side poses, everyone on the groom's side poses, but then we are doing some traditions that we like, um, at the church obviously, um, the rehearsal dinner, so we've just kind of cherry-picked the traditions that we like. Tips for managing stress as you get closer to the big day. Uh, did I tell you that I was awake from midnight till 4am this morning? <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm the best to give tips on managing stress. I think, to be honest though, even the lady that did my Bamford massage yesterday, she was like, your body is not that tense, you're not that stressed. And I think it's just I'm really happy in the knowledge that what will be will be. We've got all the building blocks there. The things that I'm worrying about now are just little details and everyone always says that no one even notices these little details. Like, yeah, the bride might be annoyed if a certain plant is not in the right position or there's something in the background of a photo, but no one's gonna notice that. So I think I'm just like, everyone that I love is gonna be there. The important thing is that Charlie and I get married and that's gonna happen. So everything else is just a bonus. <laughs> Will there be a live stream? Um, I hadn't actually considered that, but no, I don't think so. Are you having one or several cakes? We're just having one. I think it's going to be three tiered. Where is the honeymoon? I think we will end up going to the Maldives in January again, our favourite place in the world. Obviously super special to us, but summer is not <laughs> the time to go. You wanna wait until January, February is ideal. So I think we're gonna start looking at that. We might escape somewhere a couple of weeks after the wedding, but the weather in Europe has just been so unpredictable lately that we thought we're not gonna book anywhere until like the time. So we're just gonna block some dates off in our diary after the wedding and then see where we wanna go. There's a lot of questions here that I'm going to dodge because it's giving away too much. Will there be a dog table <laughs> like there are kids' tables at weddings? <laughs> no. Um, one of Scarlett's wonderful friends, Maria, is actually whisking the boys away after they've done their photography duties so that they don't get stressed and anxious with loads of people in their garden. So they won't be dining with us <laughs> for the wedding breakfast. Are you doing a whole wedding weekend? Um, kind of yes <laughs> why not drag it out why not our friends and family have waited long enough we thought we might as well make the most of it who is your maid of honor i do not have one that is one tradition that we are not doing live music or dj both um when the dj is playing there will also be a saxophonist so i guess a lot of live music flowers and floral arrangements will they all be from your garden i feel like i've answered a lot of that today a lot of the flowers will be i'm growing as much as possible but unfortunately i just don't have the capacity to grow everything that we need so a lot will be um, sourced from local flower farms 
I really want to know which shampoo and conditioner you're using. I'm using the Weller Color Motion set, and then every now and then when I need some toning, I use the Redken Blondage. What made you want a longer engagement? Um, I think when we first got engaged, being totally honest with you, we just weren't quite ready to start planning a wedding. And then when we were ready to start planning a wedding, we started planning, and then COVID, and then house move. And then we were going to get married last year and the supplies that we wanted weren't available so it just happened that we had a long engagement but I think like in our future that won't matter. It doesn't even matter now if anything our friends and family are just like hallelujah it's finally happening. Um, but you never hear anyone be like oh I don't know why we took so long. Everyone, all of my friends that are married are like why did we rush it? <laughs> You're married forever so why rush? top three things that were a priority for your wedding for charlie i know the food <laughs> super priority he's a huge foodie i would say the food the location here um and the vibe i'm gonna say the vibe just like everyone's mood being up which is why i think we've invested quite a lot in the entertainment because we just want like everyone to be having an amazing time what areas did you choose to splurge and save on <sighs> I'm racking my brains for something that we've saved on because everything has just ended up being so much more than I could ever have dreamt of. We splurged on the marquees, we splurged on the flowers, we splurged on the dress. Actually, my dress has not turned out to be as crazy expensive as it could have been. I tried on a dress that I fell in love with and I was quoted £40,000. <laughs> Sorry, my camera battery just died on me. I think I was talking about wedding dresses. Yeah, so if there's one area that I've actually saved, it would probably be the wedding dress because I could have gone mental. I would never have spent that much on a dress, but I could have spent a lot more, but actually going down the bespoke route and designing something from scratch has ended up actually being more affordable than I expected. Uh, any other areas that we've saved on? I literally can't think of any. Like everything has gone over budget, being totally honest with you. Budget tips. <laughs> I will not be able to answer that question. How long have you been together? I always thought you were married. 11 years, long time. Where will your guests be staying? Um, we've got a couple of really big Airbnbs around the local area and local hotels all around here. What about your wedding will be different, stand out compared to other weddings? I think maybe the fact that it's just going to be so personal. I think I said a few months ago that you could take Charlie and I out of the picture and come into our wedding and I think you would know that it's our wedding. I think nothing will be a surprise. Everything is just so true to us. The focus on local Cotswold businesses, um, the emphasis on food, the fun vibes. I think just the fact that it's going to be so personal is going to make it very special and unique to us. Lots of questions about the dress, the dogs, uh, the dogs, honeymoon. Oh, I think that's Charlie back home from his haircut. Have you had a wedding planner? Yes. I don't know how people <laughs> organise a wedding without a wedding planner. Um, she's been amazing. I will share all of her details afterwards because honestly she's just been an absolute saviour and there are so many logistics especially if you're organising a wedding in your own home as opposed to at a venue. I think maybe if you get married at a venue you could get away without a wedding planner because it's kind of like almost a package but um, there are so many variables if you get married in your own home and we could not have done it without a wedding planner. La, 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 la. How many more should I do? There are so many questions. I'm gonna go down to the bottom. Wow, that's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> do you have a plan B if it rains on the day? No. Quite frankly, I do not have a plan B. So if it rains, which it won't, we'll get wet. <laughs> Have you found a band that's not too cheesy but doesn't break the bank? Our band is not too cheesy. I don't think they're like crazy, crazy expensive. It's not like hiring Elton John, um, but it's quite a lot more money than I thought it would be. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Like these things are expensive. Dogs, 
DJ, what would you change already? Can't tell you that yet, I don't know. <laughs> Two words, cake flavours. So we're doing both mine and Charlie's favourite, which is the lemon and blueberry and thyme for Charlie and the rhubarb, raspberry and rose for me. And then the top layer will be um, just something quite seasonal and we don't know what that's going to be yet. It'll be a surprise. Sleeves or no sleeves, someone has asked. Well, both <laughs> is the answer to that. What is left to organise? Um, I need to organise little things like the hampers that we're going to put in our family's Airbnbs, gifts for our family members, still need to organise, actually I haven't really organised my bridal bouquet or bridesmaid, bridesmaids bouquets yet because I'm just waiting to see what's going to be in bloom in the garden. I haven't actually really thought about the clean up yet. <gasps> I think our wedding plan has got a strategy for that. Did you opt to put a map of the local suppliers on the back of your wedding menu? You've got a great memory. Vicarious delight, delights, vicarious delights. <laughs> She's got a very good memory. I think I must have mentioned that once. Yes, we are. We want our guests to know where all of their ingredients have been locally sourced. So yes, lots of repeat questions. Um, I think I told you guys about the music already, didn't I? La, 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 la. Someone's asked, will there be champagne? No, there will not be champagne. There will be English sparkling wine. <laughs> What would the eight-year-old Josie think about you now? I think the eight-year-old Josie would be like, I don't know, I think this is exactly how I pictured that my life would be. That sounds really crazy. I had no idea how I was gonna get here. Freddie and I have this conversation quite a lot, actually. We feel like we unintentionally manifested our lives. That sounds really crazy. That's a very deep question, but I think eight-year-old Josie would be pretty chuffed with how everything turned out. Have you found your wedding shoes yet? Yes. Valentina rock studs. What is the vibe of the wedding? Flower garden, traditional English. I would say flower garden is gonna very much be the vibe. Veil or no veil? Veil. Are you having evening guests? Currently trying to decide this. No, we're not. We're not doing like more people coming in in the evening. We're keeping the day itself intimate, but we are having a few extra guests on a barbecue garden party day. Does the vicar require marriage classes before he performs the wedding? Spoiler alert, our vicar is a lady and no, she does not require marriage classes. How to decide on a guest list? Um, to be honest, it wasn't really that tricky. Everyone that's coming is just people that are really special to us and that we think will be in our lives forever. Genuine friends, um, people that we love and love us back and just good vibes friends basically oh gosh yeah so many repeat questions um lots of messages are saying can't wait to see it lots of questions about whether it's going to be filmed yes don't worry guys <laughs> you won't miss any lots of best wishes that's really sweet will you be getting an engagement ring upgrade <laughs> i did consider it but actually do you know what the ring that charlie proposed with is gorgeous i love it and um twill remain as my engagement slash wedding ring how to trust a supplier recommendations i would say all of our suppliers have either come highly recommended from our wedding planner or someone local has recommended them or it's a business that we already knew of and used before the wedding which Maldives island would you recommend for honeymoon, getting married in October? Ooh, very budget dependent. Our all time favorite is the Six Senses. Um, I think it's sensational. If you want something that is far less expensive than that, then have a look at Fudafushi. That is where Charlie and I met and it's a gorgeous island. Um, yeah, they'd be my two variables budget wise. Da -da 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 -da. I'm getting married in July. How do you go about the table placement with the guests? I actually did our table plan just this morning. I was thinking about, um, obviously started with the top table and then I went from there, like who's gonna chat diagonally nicely across from the top table. Um, and then just thought about common interests. Age doesn't really matter. I think all of our friends, like they did at my 30th, everyone will just get along so well because Charlie and I, our friends and family are all just awesome people and they will, everyone's got a lot in common. Um, everyone's gonna be on such good form. 
but we've definitely put people with similar interests close to each other so that they can have some great chats. Not necessarily people that know each other near each other either. I've, we've kept couples sat together, either opposite or next to each other. Um, other than that, it's a real mix and hopefully a real mixing pot of great conversations will be had. Are you staying at your home on the wedding night? Yes, we are. I guess this is not traditional again, but um, speaking totally honestly, aside from if we were to drive nearly an hour to time, there's actually nowhere, which is mental considering we're in the heart of the Cotswolds, there's actually nowhere that has a bridal suite or a hotel room that we love as much as our own bedroom, which I think is quite a strong statement. We've spent a lot of time and effort and money making our bedroom gorgeous and lovely and somewhere that we're super comfortable and I just like the fact that when we're pooped from partying we can just be like okay we're off to bed now um, and wake up in our own home which is our favourite place in the entire world. Lots of questions if I'm nervous. I don't think I'm nervous. No. <sighs> okay I think um, most of the rest of these are repeats or things which I'm not quite ready to tell you that yet so I hope you enjoyed that little um, sneakeroo preview. I think I answered lots of questions there that um, have given quite a lot away but yes I'm so excited to share more with you I hope you guys won't be bored of wedding content um, I know like every vlog <laughs> that I've done for the last month has had the word wedding in the title but that's just what's consuming my life right now anyway enough chit chat this has been a great break and now I'm gonna get back to gardening <laughs>